Hello everyone, welcome back to the homestead. I thought it'd be really fun to talk about garden varieties. And so I've decided to make a two part video. The first one will be on tried and true favorites. And then the second part will be on some new varieties that we're trying this year. So please feel free to leave comments below on some of your tried and true favorite varieties that you're growing or that you have grown in this video and then next week hopefully we'll be all be able to share some of the new things that we're trying as well and I will say my hope with these videos is not to make people feel like they have to go out and buy a bunch of plants and seeds <laughs> I'm just hoping that for those of you out there who love gardening if there's an area that you still haven't found something that you really love or if you're just still looking for a variety because you haven't found something that works hopefully this video will encourage you and give you a, at least a couple ideas and it's just fun to talk about varieties <laughs> in the garden so for those who are new to our channel we live in the missouri ozarks and we are a zone six here we've got all four seasons gets quite cold in the winter and quite hot in the summer <laughs> we also have some unique characteristics here that make it difficult to grow certain things so these varieties that i'm going to share today have been tested in the missouri Ar ozarks and they grow well for us and we just love them so I'm going to talk about uh, fruits and vegetables first and then I'll move on to herbs and finally flowers at the end of the video. Alright, so let's get to it. We've got a lot of favorite varieties since we've been gardening for about nine years. So I am going to move really quickly, but I'm going to try and show pictures of most everything. So in the brassica family, Conan kohlrabi is our favorite. It's a new favorite vegetable for us that we've been growing for a few years now and Conan is a variety that grows and matures very quickly which is great because it can get really hot really fast here and a lot of brassicas tend to bolt or not get to maturity. We also love blue curled scotch kale as well as red Russian or ragajack kale. Um, we're growing both of them right now and we've been harvesting off of them. Uh, that's one thing I like to grow in our greenhouse through the winter. It continues to grow here in our greenhouse all winter long and then we also grow it in the main garden um, with cover through the winter. Uh, for radishes we love French breakfast radishes. They've grown great for us and they're one thing that you can get a quick harvest off of and so we succession plant those in various places all around the garden so that we've got a lot of radishes coming in through the spring and into early summer. Uh, cabbages have been a difficult one for us. It's hard to find a cabbage that will mature quick enough before it gets super hot here and then in the fall it can be difficult to get it to maturity before it gets super cold. So the one that we've chosen that we really like that's worked well for us is called Early Jersey Wakefield and it's a pointy cabbage so it's a little different than your store-bought cabbage but we love it. It's worked great for us so we'll keep on growing that and we are experimenting with some other cabbages that um, I'll share in next week's video. All right, so moving on to tomatoes. Our favorite tomato varieties have been Celebrity, just for slicing. That has worked really well for us. And then also the Pink Brandywine, nice, huge, juicy tomato that we really love growing. And then for cherry tomatoes, we like the Black Cherry Tomato that we got from Baker Creek Seed Company, as well as the Sunrise Bumblebee Cherry Tomato. So those are some of our favorite tomatoes to grow. For me, growing tomatoes is a little bit challenging, a lot of maintenance, so I don't grow a whole lot for canning. I may in the future, but for now, Jovial Foods is where we order most of our tomato, canned tomato products at this point. Moving on to squash, our all-time favorite summer squash is Zucchino Rampicante. It does take a while to get to maturity, but it's one that the bugs don't bother as much, and it's just so delicious. We really love it. And then for winter squash, we've had pretty good success with uh, Waltham butternut. Uh, winter squash can be difficult here because of the squash bugs. And so it seems like the butternut always works for us. Uh, we are going to try some other varieties of butternut as well, but the Waltham has done good. So we may just stick with that if the others that we try don't work. All right, moving on to lettuce. I have a lot to share in next week's video about lettuce. I haven't had um, a lot of lettuces that I just really love in the past, but this year I tried about 10 new varieties and I'm super excited about a few of them. So next week I'll talk more about lettuce. However, we do really like Landis Winter. That's one that I plant in the fall and we let it overwinter and then early spring we've got a nice harvest. We also really like Merlot. 
Uh, it's a little bit slower to grow than some lettuce, but it's um, performed well for us and we really like the deep red color of it. We'll probably continue to grow that lettuce as well. All right, cucumbers and melons. We love Market More 76 uh, for our cucumber. That's one we've grown for years. It's a great slicing cucumber. Uh, we love Mexican sour gherkins. We'll probably always grow them. They're just so fun for snacking on in the garden. So that's a favorite for us. And Orange Glow Watermelon. We grew that, I believe, the first year we started gardening and we've grown it ever since because some friends introduced it to us when we first moved to Missouri and we just could not believe how delicious it was. So Orange Glow Watermelon is always on the list and we will probably always grow it as long as we can. Moving on to root crops, we love sweet potatoes. Um, some of our favorites have been the Azure Purple that we got from Azure Standard. And I love that one because the starts are so easy to get going. It just keeps growing and growing and growing. We've got just a couple of potatoes that have been in our windowsill in some water. And now we've got jars full of sweet potato slips. So that's been really nice. It's not our favorite for eating. However, it stores really well and it makes really good sweet potato pies. And then our other favorite is actually Mayhan yams. They are so delicious and have grown really well for us. They don't have a lot of stringiness, so they've got a really nice texture and they've just performed really well. They also start really well, not quite as well as the Azure Purple, but they're still pretty easy to get started in the windowsill. We also like the Murasaki sweet potato. I think that's our favorite for flavor and texture, but it's been really hard to get slips going. I've always just bought slips in the past and this is the first year I'm trying to get slips going on my own and it has been so slow to produce. <laughs> we do finally have a, a few little starts coming off of it so we will be definitely growing them this year but it's been a challenge to get those going. <laughs> Uh, so garlic is another one that we will always grow. It's super easy and I don't have a variety name. <laughs> it is just organic garlic that we got from the local health food store and we've been growing it every every year that we've lived here and it's doing great. So I don't know the variety on that but we will always grow garlic. <laughs> uh, beets. We really like bolt hardy beets. That's a variety that Charles Dowding, um, I found him on YouTube and it's one of the varieties that he grows and it's done really well for us because it's, it is truly slow to bolt and matures nicely before it gets too hot here. All right, moving on to legumes. Our favorites are purple potted pole beans. We love them, we grow them every year. Uh, we also like a fairly new one to us but we'll continue to grow it and it's a purple queen improved bush bean. And then an all-time favorite is Dragon Tongue Bush Bean. We've grown that from the beginning and probably will always grow those as well. They tend to not take the heat as well as the Purple Queen Improved, but they still do quite well and we love the flavor of them. Uh, and just a few more random things before we move on to herbs is we really love the Five Color Silver Beet Chard. We've grown that for years now and it does great. Um, we discovered orchard baby corn, which has been great for us as well. We have a lot of issues with bugs and pests in Missouri, and we found that our sweet corn often would get eaten by the bugs before it was ready for us to eat. So the orchard baby corn grows really fast. It's just a little cob, but it's so delicious, and it gives us a little bit of sweet corn to enjoy um, in the middle end of summer. Okay, next I'll move on to herbs and plants that I throw into that category because we use them for tea making. Uh, basil is the one that we grow. It's an annual, so we start it from seed every year, and we have three favorite basil varieties right now. Emily, which is a small Genovese type basil. It's just an all-around great one for cooking. Cinnamon basil is absolutely beautiful. It smells so good, and we just love having it in the garden. And then lemon basil, which is so good to mix with lemon balm for tea, especially cold pressed tea on a hot day. Uh, we also grow banquet dill, and that one self seeds. It just kind of pops up everywhere in the garden. We don't mind. I just kind of move it around where I want it. And that's a great one because it grows nice and tall. It's got good structure, stays standing pretty well. Um, it's even good for using in uh, bouquets for flower arrangements and of course using it for in the kitchen. Moringa is one that we grow to dry the leaves and use for just extra nutrition through the winter. It's packed with vitamins and minerals 
and it's beautiful in the gar garden. The dwarf variety grows to be about five or so feet tall. We've had pretty good success with it, so we keep on growing it. And I just we just pull all the leaves off in the fall before it turns yellow and dry those and use those in soups and different things. You can even grind it up and use it as a, something to sprinkle on different things, salads and things, just to give a little bit more nutrition. And then Roselle, that's one that we grow um, to save the calyxes for tea, for hibiscus tea. Um, super tasty, fruity kind of tea that we love. And so we'll keep on growing that. It does take quite a while to mature. And so I started early here in the greenhouse so that it has time to get all the way to the flowering stage before it gets cold here. And we can gather up the calyxes and dry those for hibiscus tea. Uh, some perennial orbs that we love. One is right behind me here. This is apple mint. It's one of our favorite mints because it's so mild and it does tend to have a little bit of an apple flavor. So we really enjoy it. It is very invasive. So I will warn you about that, but you'll always have plenty to share with friends and it will just keep producing all season long. Uh, we just love it. We make a lot of cold pressed tea using apple mint. Um, another perennial herb that we really like for tea is lemon balm. We've got, we've got that growing in a couple places in the garden and plan to continue to spread that around. We love chamomile. We have a variety called Zlati Lawn from Baker Creek and it's been wonderful. It can become invasive so you got to be careful with that. It likes to self seed really well here in Missouri. <laughs> but it's a wonderful one to have for tea. One of my all-time favorites for tea is Anna's Hyssop or Agastache Blue Fortune. It's one that we have growing all over the place and I keep spreading it because of the wonderful licorice taste. If you love black licorice, you will love this plant <laughs> and it grows really well here in Missouri. Uh, we love chives, both the common chives, which are just about to open up with their beautiful purple color right now. And then we also have garlic chives, which are so tender, sweet, and delicious in the early spring. And they do also have a really pretty white flower head on them in the middle of the summer. However, we found that that has to be deadheaded or there will be garlic chives all over the garden. <laughs> and they're not so easy to pull up once established. Oregano is a, also another favorite herb that we try and keep just in little ball shapes and they turn into these little clumps with beautiful little pink flowers at the top in the summertime. They're beautiful and of course they're great for cooking with. And also creeping thyme. That's one that is super easy. Hardly have to do anything with. It just keeps coming. We love that for our chicken pot dinners especially. Lavender is another perennial herb that struggle a bit here. You have to get the right variety, but if you can find the right variety, it does really well. So we have uh, Phenomenal and Province. Those two varieties have come back through our tough winters and done really well. Uh, cat mint is another one that does well. Uh, we've got the cat's pajama variety and then other another just generic one that we started from seed. So it's not a specific variety, but pretty much any of the cat mints uh, will will grow really well here. All right, there's probably a few more perennial herbs out there that I've forgotten, but I'm gonna go ahead and move on to flowers now because I don't want this video to get too incredibly long. <laughs> so some favorite annual flowers are of course zinnias. Uh, there are just tons of varieties out there. Some of our favorites are polar bear and purple prince. And then we also like the queen varieties. Racina calendula is another flower that we grow for medicinal purposes. We gather and dry the flowers for making a healing oil uh, for dry skin and things like that. Globe amaranth mix is one that I usually kind of put in with the zinnias and it becomes this immense bush with all kinds of little beautiful balls, <laughs> flower heads that are little balls. And that I also mix in with our healing skin oil. A favorite variety of Cosmos is the Apricot Lemonade. That's a new, newer variety that we've grown for a couple years now and I really like it. It doesn't get too out of control and the flowers are just really beautiful and mild in color. Sunflowers, we've been growing short stuff sunflowers for years now and I just love how easy they are to take care of. They grow and mature really quickly. They don't need any kind of staking. Uh, that, so they stand up strong, upright, they don't get too overwhelmingly tall, but they still put on a good show and they make a nice big seed head that we can feed to our chickens and other birds on the homestead. 
some favorite perennial flowers that are tried and true we've had in the garden for at least a couple years or more have been burgundy glow ajuga which is a really beautiful ground cover and especially this time of year it just stands out in the garden it is so lovely uh it's one that does tend to take over an area so you have so you'll always have lots to share with friends <laughs> but it's not too aggressive it is manageable Johnny jump ups are a favorite as well. They do self seed here, which we actually love. <clears throat> That's one of the favorite things in the spring is to go around the whole garden and gather up all the Johnny jump up flowers and kind of clump them back together where we want them. Columbine is another one that we grow and it's a variety called pink petticoat. So we spread that around various places. It's beautiful in the spring, kind of between the bulbs and the summer flowers. Of course, spring bulbs, we can't forget those. Some favorites are daffodil varieties that I really love. Um, one's called Stainless. It starts out as a little yellow uh, daffodil, kind of usually in groups of about three, but then they turn to this pure white after a while. They're really beautiful and they last for a really long time. Another daffodil variety that I really love is called Obdum. It lasts for a really long time as well, and it's a super fluffy white one that almost looks like a rose. It's beautiful. One of our favorite tulip varieties is called Queen of the Night. It's a very deep, dark purple that is stand it stands out. It really pops in the garden, and it's um, especially beautiful with light blue flowers. Um, or lavender. It's it's really pretty. Uh, we've also got crocuses. I don't really recall any favorite varieties uh, that we have. We've got about four different varieties right now and we love them all. <laughs> Salvia is another perennial flower that we really love. Blue Queen is one that I started from seed as well as Rose Queen. Um, we started those from seed and those are doing really well. Um, there's just a lot of Salvia varieties out there and they're all so beautiful. <laughs> Um, Pinstamen is another one that we really like. Uh, Twizzle Coral is a variety that we have and it does really well here. Daylilies are a favorite as well. Um, as far as varieties, I think one of my favorites is called Purely. It's a white daylily that's just beautiful. Uh, Hardy Hibiscus does really well here. Lots of beautiful varieties out there. Uh, so far we have one called Brandy Punch which is a beautiful pink variety and then vintage wine is a deep dark burgundy and next week I'll share some of the new varieties that we're bringing in because they've just performed really well and are standout color in the garden in the summertime so beautiful echinacea is another great perennial flower and used medicinally as well it's both beautiful and very useful in the garden uh, favorite varieties that we have in our garden are green twister which we started from seed years ago and then we also have the powwow series both um, powwow white and powwow wild berry okay one more perennial flower sedum does really well here uh, we've got autumn joy out in the garden which is beautiful however it does get quite large so I ended up transplanting a bunch of them out to our swale to just give more room for it and I've got a few new varieties coming in uh, that I'm going to be bringing into the garden this year that I'll share in next week's video. Alright so I'm, I probably missed quite a few different varieties. but I tried to share most of our favorites off the top of my head and off my little list here. So hope you enjoyed this today. If you've got some favorite varieties that are tried and true that you would love to share, um, please leave a comment below. As always, thank you so much to our patrons who make these videos possible. We so appreciate you. Until next time, we pray blessings over you and yours. And whatever you do, do it with your whole heart.